योग कर्मसु कौशल डॉक्टरेट डिग्री इन द एरिया ऑफ एजुकेशन मीडिया एंड अदर टू इज होल्ड ऑनररी डॉक्टरेट डिग्री वन इज वन हैज रिसीव फ्रॉम सेंट मदर टेरेसा यूनिवर्सिटी एंड अनदर वन इज from the united noble rescue services instructor she has entered the world book of records on three occasions she received a certificate of participation from the world book of records united kingdom for participating in the 24 hours live webinar organized by lead india foundation usa she was also invited as guest of honor to release the asia book of records and india book of records consisting of uh, 1147 authors she is the joint editor also she is the editor and an author of lockdown impacts which consists of a total of 45 authors in her book she received the best editor 2021 award for the asia book of records and india book of records she is the president of santidur parivar uk women swing vice president global educator sector msme chamber of commerce and industry of india international director sarg nation international human rights association she is the ambassador of global peace uk and editorial chair she is also the ambassador of project life india global chairperson of the community seniors presidential home member of the national women's activities portfolio and rotarian she is the academic researcher and former director of international association for the study of giants uh, she is the involved in many voluntary institutional and ngos she is uh, affiliated with multiple international universities and holds the academic scholar position visiting resource person at ugc HRDC Gujarat University HRDC Saurash University she was travel to 79 plus countries globally to make a positive global change and publish total 24 educational papers newspapers articles and magazines articles during the covid 19 pandemic she has also published 11 total books for her amazing contribution to society she has featured in the 48 plus videos 19 sorry total 95 plus newspapers and books she has 27 upcoming international conference presentations and other publications we are all lucky to avail such a great resource person dr parin somani welcome madam heartily welcome on behalf of hrdc gujarat university over to dr parin somani madam good afternoon everyone um thank you so much for the lovely and kind introduction i would like to thank gujarat university um uh, priti ji uh, professor priti ji dr um, jagdish joshi um the director of ugc hrdc for uh, for uh, gujarat university and all the eminent speakers and all the privileged people who are on this platform today it is my privilege to be with you and share my knowledge on the covid-19 pandemic and the new world in the new normal world isn't it great that we all are together we all have chosen on education as a profession so i think let's recap by refreshing our mind what is education well education can be defined as the process of receiving or giving systematic instruction historically education has been imparted to students through face to face interaction it has engaged students of all ages to learn within educational institution despite the technological advancement traditional education involving face to face interaction was the primary method of educating students prior to the pandemic with the occasional use of technology within learning sessions 
However, some higher educational institutions had remote courses available for distance learning students. We all know that COVID-19 pandemic has affected societies globally. It has affected 210 countries and territories, two international convenings around the world. Societies are a need of global catastrophe where individuals have been affected socially, economically, and politically. The world is undergoing rapid change from whatever we once called normal. The world has witnessed many societal changes, epidemics and pandemics that are documented within many historical texts. Thus, international governing bodies advised by the World Health Organization to take strict action and implement severe lockdown regulations and social distancing measures aiming to contain the virus, coronavirus pandemic. This was going through a change when they also promoted the importance of excellent hand hygiene, good respiratory etiquettes simultaneously, stressing the importance of personal protection equipment like masks and gloves to protect societies. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a global upheaval affecting societies and has highlighted a major disruption of education systems globally. Pandemics have historically been a transition between the new and the old. Human beings have broken links with the past to create and reimagine a new society. The new normal society is currently being formed where individuals are adapting and changing ways of their attending goals. Let's look at the education institutions in a way we would like to see. So it is a priority of all education institutions to ensure continuing education and students' well-being. Overall, we can think that over the years, educational institutions have been following pedagogies, especially addressing teaching methods in, a, in a such a way that teaching methodology and assessment with a focus on obtaining desirable exam results, reaching student satisfaction and maintaining a good student attitude. What was classed as normal? Think about it. Well, it was normal for traditional education, essentially relies on face-to-face -face interaction between us and the educator and our students. In the past, if you remember, at the university and school students were grouped accordingly to their age and then their learning capacity. Students would learn through listening to the educator who would detect learning material to the learner to write. This format was implemented so that the students were able to contain and attend good results working towards a favorable occupation and jobs, which would lead towards a prosperous future. Due to the massive dependency on traditional education, school closure resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic have affected approximately 1.2 billion learners in 186 countries around the world. There was a desperate need for educational governing bodies to change the way education was imparted to learners. Fortunately, we live in a technological era, which we all believe that and we all know that. 
but technological advancement has allowed communication to continue without physical interaction many higher education institution like this gujarat university has already made us use of this the implementation of lockdown measures has transformed students learning from traditional pedagogies to remote alternatives ensuring educational continuity but affecting all students in higher education now that we are easing back into a new normal world as educator there is an expectation to act with excellent personal and professional ethics to ensure teaching effectiveness but how can you do this the question comes in our mind well how would i do it but there is a way and this is what i will discuss with you all today the most effective teachers aiming to achieve and sustain the highest degree of ethical conduct in order to maintain the professionalism status of occupation we as teachers must understand our responsibility not only as individual people but also as a part of our respectable profession within contemporary life globalization with global connectedness has increased education is a method through which changes to society can be made therefore if we as a teacher or management are able to change our mindset from commercial ideas to value based ideologies positive societal progression can be achieved easily this goal can be accomplished through us as a teacher it is our duty to set example not only to our students but also to every person around us i would like you all to think about the way we can do this wish i would be there in physical to tell you wish i can be there as a part of the event where we can all meet up but i would like to share a wonderful news with you today that today right now i am in tamil nadu in gtn college where i was invited to deliver my talk as a chief guest in a live session where we were having nearly 500 students in the classroom and i've delivered the talk so we want to wait for that moment we want to wait for that time when would that come when would when would we able to see that yes very soon we can do that i would like you all to think if the time comes let's look at the example to our students and those around us think about it right now because we are not in a physical session so i don't know how much you are going to make a note of it but just make a note of it well we can do this am i right yes we can do this by living our lives through good ethical behavior we can seek to be a role model in society always aim to do the right thing ultimately we aim to inspire our students and society through our behavior and the way that we act teaching effectively within the new normal is our aim is just not my aim is aim for everyone so that we can help students to progress the teacher and faculty members which comprises of each person in this room is an integral person within the process 
teaches the students and impart knowledge or skills. Everybody's listening to me today. Everybody are on this webinar have got a thought, have got an idea, and they know that they can do much better than they used to do before. The thing is that the way we improve, the effectiveness can be defined as the quality of being successful in producing an intended result. Therefore, effective teaching is an important attribute of quality education. Students perceive an effective teacher as an individual that helps to develop the basic skills, understanding proper work habits, a desirable attitude and a value, values judgment. It is a teacher who is continuously aiming to achieve goals indirectly, focuses on the student's learning. The positive and the negative behavior demonstrated by teacher determines how effective they are within the teaching environment. This is important to understand in the new normal world as this has a direct impact on student achievement. There are series of ethical principles that have been developed within teaching profession to guide members of staff in their conduct and behavior. The ethical princip principles provides a basic through which educator can differentiate between desirable and undesirable. Professional conduct and behaviors of educators like ourselves ethical in ethics deal with moral principle they're usually accepted by an individual or a group voluntarily what do you think the professional obligation of a teacher are you can write it down in a chat box are you are you all are you listening to me Yes, but I'm listening to you. Perfect. So what I would like you to do, if you can write the messages on a chat box. Okay. To, to understand. And then I'll look at it. I want you to think about the professional obligation of a teacher. I'll give you a couple of minutes to write some. Everybody should make some notes. Is everybody writing their messages? What do you think the professional obligation of a teacher are? As a teacher, what can we do to help our students? I'm not getting any answers from anyone. Can you please send me that on a chat box? Oh, yes, I can see that. Yes. So if you can keep on a oh, wonderful, I can see the good messages are coming through. Excellent. So Proper guidelines regarding career selection, um, always ready to help students to plan and prepare appropriately the assigned courses and lectures to conduct assigned classes at the scheduled time. We can motivate our students and increase their confidence. As a teacher, we encourage and motivate students use of modern teaching methods. Thank you very much for giving me the beautiful answers. And these answers, you can keep sending me the messages and I'll keep on reading. But I think this is a fantastic. So on the screen, can you see that? I'm sure you all can see the answers which I was expecting from you. But I'm glad I have found beautiful answers from you within the professional development of the students. Mentoring, consultation, practice, study and improve, reflection and learning. We can take it one step further. Look at our relationship as an educator in order to fulfill these professional obligations and facilitate the learning process. We need, as an educator, a good relationship 
with our students, a relationship with parents and guardians. If necessary, we also need to cultivate a good relationship with society and the nation. And with our educational profession, the relationship we have with colleagues and professional organization, but also a relationship with management and administration is also important. These are most important relationships that we as educator must maintain. Now, we all know that on a daily basis, we encounter numerous ethical dilemmas. The ethical dilemmas that we encounter can include ethics of consequences, ethics of cons consistence, and ethics of care. There are three moral languages that can have a bearing on ethical and professional practices. They, are, they include, number one, rules and principles. Number two, characters. And number three, basic beliefs. Moral principles are the foundation of delogical ethics. Means the rules and duties create the foundation for moral actions. From consequential ethics, we as an educator can focus on the importance of the consequences of our own action. And we are able to provide a justification for education that helps all of our students to achieve their results. We as an educator can be deemed as a, as a moral actor who can create an ocean of consequences com as complicated as we would like. But we must consider the type of society that helps to nurture our students. And through that, we should adapt our behavior to act with certain situations. This can form the foundation for social ethics. Virtue ethics is imperative within educational institution through which I was, through which the students will flourish. It is vital for all educated to uphold professional integrity as we strive to enhance the dignity of teaching profession. Simultaneously, we must take suitable measures to put a stop to professional misconduct. We can achieve this easier by developing our personalities. So first of all, let's reflect on the term personality. I have done few talks at Gujarat University about personality. So I won't go much in detail this time, but I'll go through very quickly just to go on a track of my flow with my presentation today. It is the characteristics pattern of thinking, feeling, and behavior, all of which makes an individual unique. It is what makes us who we are. So when we say you are great, you have a great personality, we actually mean that I like you. You are an interesting person. I would like to connect with you and you are fun or pleasant to be around. In life, everybody wants to be attractive and likable. Do we all agree? Yes. So in that respect, possessing a good personality is important. It has been found that approximately 85% of your success and happiness will be a result of how well you interact with others. And through your personality, it is decided that if people are attracted to you or turn away from you. We can only improve our looks naturally, only to a certain extent. But we are able to improve our personality traits as much as we would like to, or as much as we would desire. We can develop our personality skills and integrate those skills with we choose that we are agreeable to us and fits well within us into 
our person into our criteria into our lifestyle into personality how can we achieve a question arises in the mind how can we achieve this listen intently to other people in your personal or professional life for example Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis who was the first lady of the United States during the presidency of John of Kennedy she was regarded as an international icon of style and culture now Jackie was considered to be one of the most and a beautiful charming woman in the world why because she cultivated the skill of being an exceptional listener she was renowned for the way she would look at the person in the eyes she would listen to every single word and make them feel important this is very important when teaching students you have to make them feel important always ensure you act with integrity you act with integrity and treat others how you want it to be treated this skill improves your personality and the most and it is vital skill to possess as a civil service officer because if you are true to your words you will be admired true am i right when you keep to your words you will be respected and appreciated by others within the society within the community within your colleagues and within the country therefore seek to be true and honest individuals understand the value of other people respect others and yourself in order to teach students effectively it is important that we must always aim to be positive in everything we do through being positive you can create a positive energy and express positive vibes through your attitude it is always easy to look for negative aspects of people but you should forget the negativity and focus on the positive always see the best in people welcome people in your personal or a working environment with a warm smile so the smile is free doesn't cost you anything and that's a warm smile will help you to spread the happiness and joy you can do this through your action through your ethics and behavior help people when they require your help be thoughtful and generous with your time knowledge and resources aim to be happy light hearted and see the funny side of a situation and practice gratitude individuals enjoy their being around the people that make them smile or make them happy it creates happy moments through which you can share positive energy if someone is going through challenging times then be supportive empathetic and sympathetic they are enduring qualities that help you to relate to the feelings and emotions of others you will then be the support system for others around you you can encourage and motivate others while believing in them and inspiring them to overcome their challenges in their personal or professional life as a role model we must follow the professional conduct of ethics this makes this makes you sure that a student should receive a fair and honest education that is uncompromised be fair to your children be fair to your ch students we all know that the amount of work involved within professional teaching and also the expectation from students societies and ourselves particularly as we move forward into the new normal world we see that the desire for respect from other teachers 
colleagues, students, and members of the community makes our role as educator very crucial. To ensure our role as educator is effective, we must adapt to change and value time. Therefore, time management is crucial. I am sure we have gone through this time management in the past presentation, but I will quickly run through to get a right flow of my presentation once again. So time management is the important factor because it increases competences and productivity. So as time becomes limited, effective management of your schedule will allow you to increase your productivity. Explore more opportunities. Make better decisions, giving priority to important things. Go back, please. Slide is changed. Next one. Explore. Explore. Okay, go back. Sorry, not this one. Next one. That's it. Explore. Excuse me. Explore more opportunities, make better decisions. And by getting more better decisions, then the stress level is less. And when the stress level is less, you boost your free time. And when, the, when you're boosting your free time, what happens? You are driving the road to success. So for example, we need to stick to project deadlines to deliver good quality work prior to deadlines. It is a life skill. Managing time is not all about squeezing the maximum number of things possible in your schedule. It is about doing things efficiently in a way that more important things are done first. Your work is simplified. You save time. Your stress level is also go down. So how can we do this? I want to give you a couple of minutes to think about it. How can we do this before I go into the next slide? I'm sure everybody has got some thoughts and ideas. Let's run through once again. Give priority and divide your tasks in categories of importance. Create a logbook on a regular basis. Develop a habit of keeping track of all your tasks that need your time and attention on a daily or a weekly basis and write it down. This will help you to understand where all you are wasting your time. Based on this observation, you can start saving time. Also, figure when you are most productive and schedule top priority tasks for this time. Focus on one thing at a time. If you try to do too many things at the same time, you will finish none of them. And you will end up by doing them poorly because your attention will get divided in several parts. And you perform each task with less efficiency and attention to detail. So do not procrastinate. As educator, you are all well disciplined. However, sometimes before you never realize, you end up wasting time that you could have utilized completing a task. This is followed by stress and anxiety. And therefore, it is highly recommended that you avoid procrastinating. This will save you time and this extra time can be used to rest or enjoy your hobbies. So review your progress. Sometimes sticking to a plan that you have made can be challenging. So develop a habit of reviewing your progress at least once a day. This will help you to revise your plan accordingly to your progress and reach your goals to help your students quickly. Take breaks. While you are working hard on improving your time management skills, do not forget to give yourself a break. Every once in a few hours, 
you must realize that nobody in the world can work for 24 hours straight without realizing so think about it the efficiency will get better when you have some breaks therefore instead of just working for hours and hours as i know you are all dedicated to your profession and students but take short breaks for a quick walk go and refresh your mind when you get back to the educating when you're coming back to educate you will notice that your efficiency has increased in manifold make every task your habit there are so many things that we have to complete on a daily basis on a regular basis the only way you can do this smoothly without getting anxious is by turning into a good habits habits comes naturally to you and hence save times and relieve stress maintain a healthy lifestyle this is more important for time management than you think when you exercise regularly sleep for at least 7 hours a day eat nutritious food you are able to maintain a good state of mind believe it or not with a healthy lifestyle you are able to do a quality work faster with much and more efficiency that will last longer enjoy your work remember you do what you enjoy working don't force yourself enjoy your work love what you do and you will see how effortlessly you can do it when you do something classifying it as a work you get tired easily and tend to waste a lot of time so enjoy educating students and aim to learn something new every day in our attempts or in many attempts to carry our effective teaching sometimes we feel that we are under pressure we are tired to cope with a high volume of work it means attempting to foresee work problems and being able to plan for them we may feel work stress which can lead uh, to a low morale and start to feel anxious about your workload and may find the ability to cope with difficulty but some people find they thrive under pressure to help ourselves students through this situation we can give encouragement we can support them and ask our colleagues and friends to support or support groups can also be developed within the institution to help to support each other one for the staff and another for the student so other way other hand that we can help to manage the work the work which is a pressure for both for students for educator is is to practice relaxation life lifestyle to do a mindfulness and meditation to keep the mind calm and cool let go of the stress mental well being is a paramount important so coping strategies and the ability to foresee problems can be taught and encouraged these qualities and abilities that will help you to grow to improve your teaching and effectiveness post covid-19 professionally and personally by understanding these skills and improving upon them can help you to reach your true potential as an educator this can be referred to as a personal growth and self development these personal development skills can be used within every day within your everyday lifestyle to improve yourself personally through self perseverance keeping a healthy mind and body improving your strength and talent advance your career find self fulfillment and reach goal that you have set 
However, in order to achieve optimum personal and professional ethics in teaching effectiveness, you must motivate yourself, but also motivate your students. So now let's talk about self-motivation. What is self-motivation? It can be defined as the force that drives you to do things. It is the drive that pushes you to work towards your goal, to put effort into self-development and to achieve personal fulfillment. Therefore, it is driven by instinct motivation, a kind of motivation that comes from sincerely wanting to achieve and desiring to endure reward associated Self-motivation can also be driven by extrinsic motivation, which is the drive to achieve, wanting the external rewards like money, power, status, or recognition. But usually, instinct motivation is a drive that is more effective and fulfilling. It also helps to work on a personal resilience and adapting to change. How do you motivate yourself? I am sure everybody has got some answer to talk about. Hold on to that. Breathe in. Think about how do you motivate yourself? Attach meaning to your work and take personal ownership over your knowledge and how will you achieve your goal within your work. Create a plan of what will you achieve your goal within your work. Create a plan of what you want to achieve and how. Build a routine and apply time management skills to become more organized and productive. Get enough sleep. Get nutritious food. Exercise regularly. Stay healthy. Be the productive with time. Avoid multitasking. Make sure you plan and take breaks to stay refreshed and motivated. Connect with the support system of colleagues, friends and family who will encourage you to do things to your best and always do positive to yourself. As educator, you are all leaders. Who you are leading students and societies. Leadership skills are behavior, tools and capabilities. That a person requires to be successful at motivating and directing others. Remember, motivating and directing others. It is also the ability to help people to grow in their own abilities and can drive others to achieve their own success. Leadership is a life skill that you can show even if you are not directly managing others. So what is, what do you mean by leadership skills? They will involve understanding how to motivate the behavior of others and understand your job role, understand your role. You must be committed to a vision or a mission within your organization and demonstrate integrity. Be a good role model. You should develop good problem solving skills. Take risk, also communicate effectively. Therefore, leadership can be thought as a collection of various other skills. It also includes having a positive attitude. So we can become a successful leader and educator. Therefore, we are all leaders. We are all leaders and we should all act like a leader through demonstrating the following qualities. The desire to lead, commitment to the objectives, and finally, an individual should have integrity, which is holding true to your words. Authentic in action and speech. You demonstrate the behavior you would like to see in others. It takes practice and perseverance, which includes being sincere 
consistent and aim to be a person of substance who is fair to all. A good leader is good at and promotes team lead. As a leader, as a leader of all your students, the individual who possesses the most important, the most knowledge in your lecture, you need to take responsibility for the welfare of others in your class. If something goes wrong, you should step in and ensure that a solution is decided on and implemented, but also stay safe. A large component of teaching effectiveness is a teamwork like leadership. Good teamwork involves a combination of skills that can be used when working as a collective unit in an organization towards the common goals. It introduces a variety of skills that will be valuable like communication, compromise, and a collective effort. Working in a team towards a common goal requires the intuition and the interpersonal acumen to know when to be a leader and when to be a listener. Good team players are perspective as well as receptive to the needs and responsibility of others. When leading, you need to ensure that you are well prepared and organize meetings so that you can discuss the challenges and success collectively. It is important that the whole team of facilities, faculties, educators and students understand objectives and the role within the organization and the work you are doing. Sometimes leaders are not liked, but they are defined by the results they achieve. Therefore, aim high. Aim high in whatever goals that you have set. Sometimes these goals do not always lead to success or even positive results. Therefore, ensure the goal has been set correctly to achieve a specific desirable outcome for all the effort you have input. You have the influence to implement positive change within society and you do, and you do make a difference every day. Look ahead to the future outcome and constantly strive to ensure everything is done properly. The initial step, initial step is to develop yourself exactly like you are doing now by listening to me. Am I right? I am sure you all are paying attention and you are making notes of it. Then you are able to facilitate the growth of others and lead. The question will arise in your mind. How can we do this? How can we achieve this? We can create a self-awareness, self-regulation, self-motivation, empathy, and social skills. Seek to understand the quantities, not the quantities. Seek to understand the qualities of others, both students and colleagues. Facilitate discussions so that the members of the group can develop an alternative way of thinking. Try to be creative within your thinking and through this inspire others. Because it is only through the network, it is only through the teamwork that the success of fulfilling your objective can be reached. Delegate the workload responsible and realistically by understanding the dynamics of the team you are leading. Aim to continuously be a good role model for others by becoming the change to your action. If you aspire to make change, care about the well-being of people within your team, have consideration towards them and possess mutual trust. As an educator, we are all mentors for our students. Therefore, in order to achieve success, in order to teach effectiveness, I will share some mentor tips. A mentor is an experienced and a trusted advice that provides 
training, motivation, advice, success, direction, coaching, support, and aids in a goal setting. They are offering something very different from traditional learning. As a result, it can result in new thinking, broader awareness, enhanced self-confidence, skill development, focused improvement, and access to the wider network. There is a relationship that is built between the mentor and the mentee. A student, mentee or a student, as a mentor offers support, shared knowledge and change and challenges that mentee. The, the relationship needs to harbor trust, respect commitment, effective communication, skill development, understand and sharing ideas, feedbacks, problem solving and rewarding experience. At the same time, the mentee or student must take responsibility, have good time management skills, prepare of meeting and keep up with the moment, momentum, achieve goals, share concerns and expectation, illustration, proactiveness and excitement. So we must adopt multicultural perspective within our curriculums and promote diversity as a positive learning experience. Because I believe that adversity is strength. At the same time, we must cultivate anti-racism, promote human rights, perspective within our practices and also educational policies. It is vital to have an educator who possesses professional ethics within the educational process, as this is a vital need in societal development. We need to acquire good qualities and avoid vices. This means that we must practice modesty, patience, generosity, and aim towards identifying our pure soul. In order to attain professional excellence and self-satisfaction, we need to devise a set of we need to we need to devise a set of professional ideas. These are ideals that we have to devise ourselves. It is a code of professional ethics. It is usually based on the two principles, which is professional integrity and our ideals of service to the society. When we look up the term teacher effectiveness, we are referring to our measures of success. That when we are carrying out within our educational institution, I would like you all to create your own personal ethics. You can take into consideration your specified by our duties within the university, your positions. You can look at the efficiencies in strategies of instruction. How can you manage our students? How can you manage our class, your interpersonal relationships and the type of feedback and evaluation you wish you would desire. I don't have enough time to give you, but I'll ask you, okay, when you have time, just do this exercise. Please write down your personal professional ethics. Then do a reflection. I will not ask you anyone right now, but just make a note of it and share the professional ethics that you have devised right now with me because of time not enough to talk about share with your colleagues they are the personal to you they are next to you however i do want you to keep them at the forefront of your mind and refer them every day until you achieve your goals however it is important to review them as time changes so do the situation and circumstances. When we cultivate a high level of commitment, we will be more loyal, 
not only to our institution but also to the work that we carry out through this le high level of commitment we will be able to contribute to our students achievements effectively to increase our effectiveness we need to devise ideologies which can be relayed through a good level of personal and professional relationships within the educational institution we should aim to be ethical and effective educator through demonstrating honesty fairness justice kindness courtesy sincerity faithfulness trust dependability confidence impartiality and thoroughness we should aim to treat our students and each other with the same courtesy and respect that we would expect others to treat us we should never put personal gain before the need of our students or our colleagues if you have committed to something then it is important that commitment should be met through being ethical educator we detach ourselves from the bad habits and aim to be virtuous this will help us to maintain a balance between our lives therefore we should always be honest within our thinking our speech our action when we think when we think act with good ethics we can help our students encourage and motivate them in many different aspects yes we can help them to recognize their self value and self worth we can help them to overcome challenges and help them to tackle diversity within resilience to progress students and society through towards a new normal and beyond we have already started to enter a new normal society where change things are getting different resulting from the effects of the covid-19 pandemic a world where the social distancing personal protective equipment and technological use has become acceptable historically pandemics have been the root cause of change towards an evolving world forcing novel advancement in contemporary life thus the pandemic has facilitated a drastic shift in educational pedagogies from traditional methods to remote methods where there is an attempt to recreate traditional methods of teaching and learning on electronic platforms therefore until society globally can be defined what the new normal in is the education will con education will continue to be an amalgamation of traditional and technological learning methods which will which will be perceived as the new normal we will need to continue finding innovative methods of teaching students and maintain that interest as to certain to sustain students in higher education students and education systems have been affected due to immense uncertainty regarding continuing education pedagogies and experiencing isolation and loneliness this has had an impact on students mental health factors creating psychological issues particularly stress anxiety and depression to the trauma progress during the pandemic many higher education institution globally have attempted to help students through collaborating with other institution to provide awareness and extra curricular initiative to engage their learners however many educators are experiencing similar pressures as students relating to learning a new way of adapting during pandemic a learning new hardware and a software to administrate online learning sessions with new pedagogies to help students achieve good results although there have been benefits of continuing education 
many disparities have been highlighted, including inequalities and challenges for students and educators. Educators have had to undertake more responsibilities as our duty of care towards students has increased. We must aim to ensure normalities in education within society. That is still try to understand what is new normal is. So through our teaching pedagogies, we need to improve continuing support for our students through traditional face-to-face -face medium and remote accessibilities. The students need to receive regular communication and educational program implemented by us to ensure student security, leading to better mental health awareness. There is a necessity. I would like to end my talk by giving you a three piece of advice. This pandemic has brought many challenges. The world is upside down, but you know that how to turn it back around. You are the future of your destiny. When people around you are unwell, hungry, tired, power and money you make alone is immaterial. We want to be part of the wider solution, but how? Let me share my three important messages, three important tips with you. Number one, believe in yourself. When you believe in yourself, nothing in the life is constant. When you believe in yourself, everybody will trust you. Everybody will believe you. Nothing in life is constant. Even a caterpillar changes into the beautiful butterfly. So you know that you have the strength to create change and inspire your colleagues, inspire your other faculty members, inspire the people around you. Do not be afraid. The world has faced previous challenges, war, disease, political unrest, and financial crisis. We came out resilient and stronger than before. We learned from the past and created a better future. You can make this institution, you can mm. make society, you can make this mm. country a prosperous again. Number two, I'm just finishing my talk in two minutes. Follow your true instinct. Do the right things. Do not forget your ethical values. Be kind, be humble, be generous, be fair, help each other. And number three, be the person that builds bridges. Respect diversity, despite background, ethnicity, social, political, religious lookouts. Remember, this is our country. Yes, you can change the future. You are the leaders for our future generation. You can make all the positive impact in the society at large. Start with your family and friends. I always believe that by working together, we can make a positive global change. I would like to end with a beautiful quote of Dr. Abdul Kalam. He say, you cannot change your future. You can change your habits and surely your habits will change your future. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope you have taken some notes and help our future generation. Thank you once again to Gujarat University for inviting me here. Thank you, Dr. Jagdish Joshi. Thank you, Parin, for your wonderful session. We look forward to have some more sessions from you similar to this. So once again, Parin, we thank you on behalf of UGC, HRDC and Gujarat University. Look forward to have more fruitful sessions in future. Thank you.